Hello, you're watching Global Insights, where we speak to experts from around the world to hear their views on issues making headlines. I'm Wu Young. Now, a natural language processing tool, ChatGPT, has been making waves in the tech industry for generating human-like text responses to almost any question or request. The potential applications for ChatGPT are vast, and some experts believe the solution could even revolutionize industries, such as marketing and advertising, with its ability to generate personalized content on a very large scale. However, ChatGPT's capabilities have also raised concerns about the potential uh, for the spread of misinformation and even the automation of certain jobs. To address some of these issues, we speak with J.R. Reagan, CEO of Idea Explorer, joining us here in the studio today, as well as uh, Dr. Eric Songsu Kim, adjunct professor at the School of International Studies at Hanyang University and also founder and CEO of Data Crunch Global. Very warm welcome to you both. Thank and you. my first question goes to you, Dr. Reagan. Now, can you first of all describe the uh, key features of ChatGPT and how it differs from other language models? Yeah, ChatGPT, well, first it, it became extremely popular because it was introduced at the end of November and has been the fastest app in history to reach one million users. It only took five days. And be, it was because its ability to mimic a human and its responses, just as you mentioned with text. The Ch GPT model takes pre-trained uh, data, in this case 175 billion pieces of uh, data, and actually uses that to create the background and the context that it uses then to predict and respond to other text, and it learns. Uh, it learns from responses that it gets. So the model that uh, is used here is this pre-trained responsive model that then mimics a human being uh, in, in incredible ways, and that's why it's been so popular. Right, I see. And uh, Dr. Kim, um, in which areas or industries do you see ChatGPT affecting the most? Okay, if you watch the movie called Hidden Figures, it is about African American females mathematicians who worked at NASA uh, during the space race. Uh, they do mathematical computation to send men to space for the first time. Uh, they would do compu computations with papers and pen. And what is interesting in the movie is that we call those people computers, right? And, um, but they were fast um, replaced by IBM 7090 electric computers. So there was a race between electronic computers and human computers at that time. Um, they were able to learn programming language and eventually um, learn how to manage machines. So this, this is very symbolic, in my opinion, um, with the current um, chat GPT or GPT technology that we have. Of course, it will replace a lot of jobs, but we also see that technology also creates jobs and creates industries. So in my opinion, there are a couple of industries that will be um, very important in the innovation. First, we can see a breakthrough um, in the marketing industry because uh, ChatGPT or generative um, AI has the capability of creating text images, uh, customized emails, blogs, so it will uh, greatly um, improve the productivity of the marketing job. It also have a potential to um, in innovate the education industry. Um, for with current uh, work um, in the classroom, it is a universal education, regardless of the aspiration level of the students. But with um, chat GPT or, or the generative um, AI technology, we can expect that um, each student's curriculum will be customized um, based on the generative AI technology. Right, I see. And uh, Professor Reagan, I, I wonder how you see this. How do you see ChatGPT affecting industries? And moreover, many people are wondering, is it going to take away jobs? Yeah, and this is part of the fourth industrial revolution. And we've had three revolutions before this, uh, steam, uh, electric, uh, computers, and now. And in each of those revolutions, yes, jobs have been lost. But in each of those revolutions, jobs have been created. And in this case, we should see an impact. We should see an impact on education. We should see an impact on the legal profession. All these different types of uh, industries where it requires a human being to look at text and interpret that and provide responses, well, this can do that too. So we should expect that, yes. Uh, but I think in uh, many respects, this is additive. 
uh, it gives us something that we didn't have before, and it actually then creates uh, challenges that weren't there for some industries. What we're seeing now, for example, Google has seen this as a code red kind of opportunity, uh, code red kind of situation, which could threaten its base. Uh, if I can ask ChatGPT a question instead of asking Google, well, why would I need uh, you know one or the other? So uh, these kinds of th impacts, I think, we'll see in in different ways across different industries, uh, it will end up displacing jobs, but yes, it'll end up creating jobs as well. Right, and um, it's quite fascinating how it just generates basically um, what seems like quite precise information at times, and uh, it really gives you what you look for almost instantly. But then at the same time, um, what are the poten what's the potential uh, for the danger of misusing it? Yeah, I think it's AI in general, right? We still haven't found a way to have AI do the things that humans do sometimes well, sometimes not, which is things like empathy, uh, understand morality and ethics and those sorts of things. We've seen AI, uh, when you train AI, we give it lots of information. If you give it bad information, it provides pretty bad responses. And so this is the risk rate we see now. It's so good at responses that if we give it bad information, uh, will it really take a, someone off in, a, in another direction? Um, and I'm thinking, you know, in terms of eth ethical kinds of issues or mor and moral kinds of issues. Uh, people are really wrestling with this, and AI uh, in this particular area has not solved that at all. I see. And oh, how do you? I mean, what do you think about this, uh, Professor Kim? Do you think how can we possibly um, prevent the uh, possible misuse of? Uh, applications like ChatGPT? It, there's a um, long way to go in this discussion and probably ethical AI is probably the center of this is discussion. Uh, we still have a long way to discuss and agree on which data sources we should include for generative AI or how to develop generative AI that, has, that is not discriminative or unethical. Um, this gets down to a very difficult area, <coughs> area of agreeing on what is right or wrong. Um, and this is a difficult area to con conclude since human values are different by culture, different by social groups, and it even changes over time. So we need, to, need a solid institutionalized discussion between the industry, academia, and the government to have a better understanding of how we have to deal with ethical issues. In Korea, um, large tech companies such as Naver or Kakao closely work with the academia and the government um, to at least build a guideline of how we developed these um, generative AI technologies. But still we need more opinions on how we have to um, set these standards for these guidelines because AI, in it, its essence, has a potential to become a technology used for political purposes. And that has, that's what we have witnessed uh, with breakthrough technologies, especially um, which influence information and how we use information. So a more institutionalized agreement should be um, developed over time. I see. And um, over time, Dr. Reagan, how do you see ChatGPT's you know, ability to understand and respond to context really uh, evolve and diversify news over time? Uh, diversify news, for example? Yeah. yeah, I think that um, we, as human beings, we tend to be a little bit myopic. We tend to focus on those things which are relevant to us and f uh, focus on it. I think with ChatGPT, for example, it'll start to give us more differing views and different sources for news. Um, it'll start to possibly give us uh, maybe a, a center of gravity that we didn't have before, that we're not really always responding to a right or left uh, view on news. Uh, I think that's the promise of, of something like this. Uh, yes, there's all the ethical and AI uh, and moral concerns, but I think there's also the promise that uh, this can bring more sources to us and, and assimilate that, to, uh, particularly with news, that maybe we didn't have and, and do that across cultures. And I think people are really excited about that. Right, I see. And um, your opinion on this, Dr. Kim, um, how do you see chat, uh, GPT's capabilities really evolving in the future? And what kind of impact do you think it could have on societies? 
Of course, um, generative AI has a great social impact since it increases human productivity by providing relevant information um, so conveniently. But what it really is about is the cost of information. Looking back in um, the history, the cost of information drove industrial um, breakthroughs. Um, the invention of the type metal accelerated socioeconomic prosperity and advancement in the social systems. And Google totally changed history by building a solid search engine. Before Google, um, if we were to acquire information, we had to go to the libraries, right? But after Google, we just um, sit in front of the PC and we were able to um, get information much, much at a faster, um, faster speed and with the variety of information that we can acquire um, out um, from the library settings. But the generative AI is um, taking that beyond the level that we um, have processed information. The, the core here is the, about the cost of acquiring information. Because the cost of acquiring information is so cheap, um, it will create a huge industry base and also um, change, probably change the history. But what we have to more focus on is to um, think about how are we going to um, democratize information uh, with ChatGPT or generative um, AI technologies. But at the same time, how do we protect intellectual properties of the people that are contrary to, to the um, data sources? Because um, the premises that the cost of acquiring information is getting cheaper means that the barriers to become an expert is getting lower as well. Then it's a question of um, are a lot of people really going to um, study hard for higher education to become an expert when there, we have so many information and sources that we can acquire knowledge. So in order to um, prevent the puzzle that we have with the generative AI of harming our data sources by having less supply of experts, we have to really create a market for knowledge so that the experts um, have the protected intellectual properties and that can contribute to um, the data source itself. If you think about Google, why uh, the reason why Google is so dominant is because it created a knowledge market for the information contributors um, that also enrich the Google ecosystem. So we have to um, design a market structure for information in order to um, take um, the generative AI to the next level and to create historical breakthrough. I see. Well, this is where we'll have to wrap up the conversation today. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Also, thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Global Insight will be back tomorrow at the same time here on Arirang TV, so do tune in then. Have a great day wherever you are. Goodbye.